Yesterday I thought it was really odd. There, there isn't a, an actual hive in here, but down here, actually there's a dead bee right there. Actually there's a dead bee right there. I, they were fighting on the entrance of this, all these boxes. These are, these are all my other bottom boards and bees were coming in and out of the entrance, but they were actually fighting as if this was their hive. Like there would be two bees ganged up on top of one, and it looks like they killed one. I've never seen bees fight over a food source before. Hello everybody. Today I'm out here in the bee yard, and you can see on the top of that one hive there. I've got some tags over there. I'm going to be trying a different system for keeping records with my bees this year. So I think I'm going to do red for the queen. I'll use, I didn't really go through and find, you know, one, two, three. I'm just going to use the random numbers. Um, so I'm going to use red for the queen. I'm going to use the blue to designate the hive. I uh, just got these on Amazon. There's a whole box. So I'm going to use thumbtacks to designate which hive or where the queen is at. And then I'm going to use these screws to uh, designate the actual hive number. That way these, these are permanent and these ones I can move around if I take a queen from here and I decide to move her, you know, over there, then I can just, I can pull this tag off and move it with the queen so I know which, which hive that queen's in. All right. I dubbed the hive number 18. There we go. Now I'm just going to do that all the way down on all the hives. And uh, we'll just make this Queen 58. Now that I've got all my hives tagged, um, I'm going to be going into this one and doing a, a deep hive inspection. It's time to see if these guys have uh, good amounts of drones going. I want to make sure that this one doesn't have any queen cells started. It's pretty full. And I also want to see where they're at with their brood. That'll give me another indication of how close they're going to be to swarming. So this is a very full box of bees. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but they're all looking at me. And I don't really want them looking at me like that. So I'm just going to turn their heads a little bit. Some drones right there. Yep, we got drones. And we got eggs. She's actually moved all the way up into this top box already. Yep. It's amazing. Yep, this over here is all drone comb and it's completely full of eggs. So they're definitely starting to think about swarm preparations. That's a beautiful frame brood. It's rimmed from here all the way across to here with pollen. And that, that to me is an outstanding brood pattern. She's got a couple holes here and there, but they're actually filled back up with larvae already. So it's possible they just, those are a little bit older and they haven't capped those yet. This hive is looking outstanding.
towards all the drones that have been hatching out. There's a new drone coming out right here. Little baby drone right there. Working on getting his way out. frames of brood now, or at least four frames with brood on them. Turn all their heads back down again, just to keep them a little bit unorganized. Yeah, this is looking great. Haven't seen the queen yet. Eggs all the way out to the edge. There's some milk brood in the bottom. The jelly looks amazing in there. They're just swimming in it. This is a beautiful frame of pollen. Now if you notice, as I pull one up, I put it right next to the one that I just pulled out. That way when I get all done with this, I can just stick my hive tool right here and I can pry and just push all the frames all the way across. Don't want to leave any gaps between your frames. It'll, bees will get in there and they'll get squished when you start pushing them together. bottom box. I'm holding the, the, the hive down, putting my hive, my hive tool in there and then slowly working it up. It keeps it from doing that pop. to the wise if you build your own boxes give yourself a little bit extra room on the edges I didn't make these boxes quite large enough so they're really tight it's a pretty ugly ugly frame there I take that out and clean it out, out a bit a spider down there in the bottom corner yeah The, the comb is more dark. Most of this comb is from the, the nukes I got last spring, and it was really old comb. I'll probably be starting to scrape some of these out and letting them build new stuff. That's one. This looks like another frame with brood on it. Yep, that's covered in brood. Guess I was fixing to explode. 
one's almost all hatched out. Baby bees everywhere. Don't see the queen yet. I'm not really looking for the queen. I know she's in here. There's eggs everywhere. That's two deep frames with brood on them. Just did two. No, I'm just kind of bumping into me a little bit. That's no cool. Yeah, smoke it down a little bit. Hold it. Take your smoker and hold it for you. Okay. There's four with fruit on it. I see eggs down in the cells. I see eggs all the way out to here. And here's here's the pollen circle right there. Get a better angle, real quick. See that pollen? See that pollen down in there, down in these these cells right in here. Small pollen in there. This is quite the brood nest. Three deeps, not full, but you can see how big it is. This is a heavy one with brood. That's four deeps. Those are almost all nurse bees. After seeing this, I can pretty confidently say it's time to start grafting. We got drones out. This hive is probably going to try to swarm in another week. I haven't seen any cells yet. That's all pollen. Cool. We got five medium frames of brood and four deep frames of brood. And honey stores everywhere. I'm quite happy with this hive. Smoke a little bit. My lovely assistant. Using my new number system, I know that queen number 62 and hive 75 is looking great. So I'm going to put that in my, I have a spreadsheet on my phone, keep track of my records. So I think we'll go into another one and see how they're doing. All right, starting on my next inspections on this side of the yard. We, uh, we started off over there and got through all those. This is a beautiful frame of almost all nectar and honey. Op open honey, I guess, you would say. Lots of pollen. Man, that's full of pollen. It's beautiful. I think I'm going to be grafting from either this one or that one. But I, I really like this one. I mean, I can do this in front of them and they just, they don't even care that I'm moving around. Let's see how much brood we got in here. Excuse me, girls. I'll wiggle my fingers down a little bit so I can get a hold of the frame. Try to get it in the middle. Oh yeah. We got a good amount of drones going in here. I don't see the queen. Looks like they'll be capping a lot of that pretty soon. Beautiful looking, looking brood in there. Let's 
So many of these bees have pollen on their legs. I don't see the queen. That's almost a full frame of brood right there. I'm looking for queen cells. I'm looking for brood health. I want to know that the I want to know that the milk brood is swimming in in royal jelly. Gross. This one's a little lighter. That's almost entirely nothing but drone brood right there. Drone comb. Don't see the queen yet. Bunch more drones. A lot of this has got fresh nectar in it actually. I notice when I put this down, I'm wiggling it up against the frame that I just moved. So I have I have these gaps nice and close together. I'll move this one and I'll put it next to that one. I'll move this one and put it next to that one. Then I can just lever them all over, all at the same time. It really mitigates squishing queen, queens and bees if you do it that way. Excuse me, everybody. Right away. Boy, that's a nice frame, frame of brood right there. I see eggs in every single open cell. No queen yet. I just decided today, I think, that next Friday is going to be my day to start grafting. No queen cells. No queen just yet. Maybe she's in the bottom box. Right, let's drop these back together. I have to watch. I'll put my hive tool in. Lever that side over. Put my other frame back here. Pretty heavy here. Gonna wiggle a little bit so they can all find a place to go. The boxes are a bit tight. Slip them down a little bit, and then these are my flexible inner covers. Got these, this idea from the uh, Canadian Beekeeper, Canadian Beekeeper's blog. He uses bubble wrap insulation, but these are just um, chicken feed, feed bags. I just cut them up till they fit on top of the hive and they'll, uh, they'll start to propolize the inside. It makes it a little bit more stiff and then they'll start to stick down to the tops of the frames. So I can kind of get them to stick down there and they, they work pretty well. It's nice to be able to just pick up a corner a little bit and, and take a look at the bees, see where they're at, as opposed to pulling the entire lid off. All right, I'm gonna get this box off and we'll look at the next one down. All right, bottom box. Just gonna lever it over a little bit so I can get a little bit of room.
Push mine out of the way a little bit. That's a milk brood. Royal jelly looks amazing. They're nicely swimming in jelly. There's our queen. The Saskatraz queens are nice and dark. Oh, she's beautiful. I don't know where she's at. Make sure to put her in there nice and gentle. Have a nice frame of brood. A lot of them hatching out. Great. So that's a nice heavy one full of honey. Yeah, that looks like new nectar to me, to be honest. Dandelions did pop. Yeah, that looks like new nectar. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna take one frame of cat brood from this hive and all the bees that are on it, and I'm gonna give it to one of my weaker ones over here. I forgot that's the drone frame. I really wanna give the other hive a drone frame. Yeah, that's the one. I'm gonna put it in this box here. This is my quiet box. A few other beekeepers on the, on the YouTube that use that. That'll just keep them in there and um, keep them quiet. Put this thing in. And then I got some of my nice comb from last year. It's a nice worker comb. It's got a crack down the middle, but they'll, they'll clean and fix that up. That'll give this queen somewhere to lay lots more eggs. All right, I've made it down to this box. I went ahead and looked, looked through these other ones by myself so I can get some work done. But uh, this is my little one. If you remember, that was my little tiny virgin queen that came back. She was sitting over there in a queen castle. And they're, they're still a little bit small. They've actually got um, two frames of brood going on, so. They're making it, but they could use a little bit of a boost. So that, that frame we took from over there, I'm gonna pull it out of our quiet box. I'm gonna put this whole frame with all the bees right in this box. I'm gonna make sure I smoke them real good. At this point, these bees are starting to wonder where their queen is. So I'm going to smoke them real good. That way everybody kind of doesn't really know who's who or who's what. That way that'll mitigate any fighting that goes on. Because all anybody can smell right now is smoke now. I don't really like to do that, but I, I'd really prefer to have that queen that's in there not get attacked by all these bees. Uh, another thing that we could do is I could find the queen and put her under a pushing cage for a day um, until everything calms down. But I've, I've done this before last year, uh, just smoke them real good and that, that seems to, uh, to work just fine. Alright, well I got those two all expected and all the way through to the bottom board. Um, like I said, I'm really liking this uh, 
this first one here for graphs so far. Um, the real test will be next week. I'm going to go through and do a mite wash. I want to see how these girls came out of winter um, with their mite loads. So if they're, those, those numbers will be my, my deciding factor on who I'm actually going to graph from. All right, that's it for today. Got in and checked on queen cells. None of my hives got queen cells yet. We do have lots of drones and uh, lots of drones to come. Uh, baby drones, I mean. It's Tuesday. So a week from this Friday, I'm going to start doing graphs and um, start getting things set up for that. And uh, I think we'll be pulling them from this hive right here. I just finished setting up another hive stand over here. You see that a little bit? Right out here in the field, just behind our house, on the south side of our house. So. Uh, this is how I set them up. They're a little bit expensive this way, but uh, I know for a fact that I'm going to have that forever. So, you know, those those pressure treated 4x4s and those cement blocks, I can, if I need to, I can move those around or whatever if I need to move it to a different location. Um, but I can get eight of my uh, nucleus colonies out here. That's one of my bottom boards right there. So that, I'm going to be setting these up probably about 100 yards apart. I uh, did some research and was finding out that um, the drones are very likely to intermingle between the hives if they're within 100 yards. But as soon as you get past that 100 yard um, mark, the, the amount of drone drift between hives goes down to like 20% or something like that. So um, that's my philosophy at this point. I'm gonna be keeping eight hives next to each other so I'll be um, you know, treating those and, and keeping those almost as if they're one hive. Um, but then I, I know that disease isn't necessarily going to go from this hive or this, this stand to one of my other stands. Uh, I actually need to go build those. Um, but when I get them done, I'll know that these, these bees won't be uh, transferring disease from themselves over to uh, the other hives. I thought I'd also mention the, uh, the tools that I used wheelbarrow, shovel, and a, tor a uh, actually that's not a torpedo level, that's a framing level. You could use a torpedo level, I just happen to have this um, since I'm building our house, so I thought I'd go ahead and use it. But it's very important that your hive stand be level. Because if it's not, when the, when the bees start drawing their comb, it'll be crooked. However level you get it this way, that's how crooked they're gonna start drawing their comb out. So if you get it perfectly level this way, then you're good. Um, I've actually got it tipped forward quite a bit. You see that bubble? Like all the way to the right. So it's, it's leaning that way. And that, that makes it so when the rain drips on the, uh, the entrance board, it rolls out the front and not into the hive. Uh, just for demonstration um, you know the box will be on here if the rain's hitting the the landing board the rain's going to hit and then rip, drip off the front as opposed to dripping into the hive and causing all kinds of moisture issues um, so that's why I've, I've tipped them forward but side to side they're perfectly level <laughs>